Hey guys, hope you guys are doing good today. Um, today's Q&A is about um, my drawing supplies. So what I use for my graphite drawings, what I use for my colored pencil drawings, um, what I use to blend, what I um, use to find my colors, and just some extra tools that I also use. So starting off, um, I will go through the supplies that I use for my graphite drawings. Um, I use the Fabriano um, paper, so it's just the 56 pound paper. I don't even know what that means. I guess that's the weight of the paper. You're probably laughing at me if I'm being silly. Okay, so this is the paper that I use. Excuse me. Fabriano paper. So this is what I use for my graphite pencils. It's a very nice um, thinnish kind of paper and it's very smooth. Um, so yes, that's the paper. And then the pencils that I use are the Faber-Castell's um, 9000 set pencils. So um, these pencils are just a set of 12, so they go from 2H to 8B, which is pretty good. So I'll use them um, to shade in my different values. And then um, to blend, I will use my Fabriano brushes. So they are a really nice um, soft brush and they are perfect for building up the values in skin tones when you are blending. Um, another thing I use for blending is I will use um, little tortillions. I don't want to flip this over but there are some tortillions in all sorts of sizes. I have um, some more little brushes um, as an extra and then what I use for the real dark areas is I will use the general General's Layout Extra Black. And for the other real dark areas, I like to use um, the carbon powder. So it's just pretty much a charcoal stick that I've grated down into powder. So I'll use that for the real black areas. And then also for shading, um, I will use graphite powder. So I would use the pencils or the powder or kind of mix them about and switch around. Um, and then for the outline and real fine details I will use my Mars Technico um, 2B pencil. So they have little lead pieces that come in a little container like that. And then they range from HB to 4B I think. So um, that is what I will use for fine details for the outline and also um, for dark areas because the 4B and the 2B in this pencil is actually quite quite dark so um, you could also use that for the darker shadows definitely don't use it for the lighter areas because it's always dark and then um, to do highlights and to get fine little hairs and stuff in my graphite drawing I will use a Tombow eraser so I never use any pressure when I'm working in graphite I never press hard because I found that the graphite leaves a shimmer so if you just gradually layer and layer and layer um, you'll find that the shimmer won't be there so that's good and then yeah for extra highlights just use a little Tombow eraser because it can really get those tiny pieces okay so those are my supplies for my graphite drawings for my colored pencil drawings I love this paper this is the best paper ever. So this is the Archer's watercolor paper and it is the Smooth 185 um, GSM. I've just run out of this one, so I have another one in the cupboard. But um, yeah, this is the paper that I love to use for my colored pencils. It's got a very, very little bit of a tooth and it can just handle a lot of layers. And because it's watercolor paper, it does very well with the solvent. But I'll get to that in a minute. So the pencils that I use, I use the 120 set in the Faber-Castell's Polychromos pencils. And along with that, I will use the um, Prismacolor pencils. And I have the um, set of a 150. So they're the Prismacolor Premier pencils. Um, to blend my pencils, and I think I'll do a whole separate video on blending because um, a lot of people do like to know the different kinds of techniques and uses for blending. I have very weak wrists so I do not like using pressure 
ever. So um, I like to use a solvent to blend. So I use the Art Spectrum's um, odorless solvent. Uh, it hardly has a smell at all, which is really good. And then what I do is I have a little, tiny little green container in there. And then I have this in another container. Um, and then I have a white cloth over there. So what I do is I use my brush or my tissue paper or my cotton bud or whatever I'm going to use to blend. I will dunk it in there and then any excess will be rubbed or dabbed off onto the white cloth. And then I will go ahead and put it to my paper. So the main things that I use for blending um, are brushes. So I like to use these brushes. So I have a tiny little brush like this which is a number two and it's a protege brush and it's just a cute little sharp pointed soft brush I'm not fussed about what kind of hair or anything it is it still does a trick whether it's the softer or the harder kind of hair um, so yes I like that for the fine details and then I have these which are quite hard on the top here, they, it says West Art on here, so I don't know if that's the brand or what it is. But I have size 0, 2, 4 and 6 and these I find are the only ones and the tiny detail one are the only brushes that I use for blending. I haven't really used any other, other sizes or haven't found the need to use any other kind of brush. So um, yeah, so that is what I would use to dip in my solvent and then go ahead and blend on my paper. Um, Additional to that, oh, before I, when I have my paper set and um, put down in the right position, I will use some masking tape to um, put the corners down. This is really good, it doesn't damage your paper as long as you make sure you peel it off really slowly because sometimes you do peel it off too quickly and it can tear your paper, so just be very careful when you peel it off. Okay. Um, another little thing, you don't need this, but um, I like to put a watch. Um, on, over my work and then when I do the time-lapse video it just looks really cool seeing that time go faster and faster and faster and faster um, and then it also gives your viewers a little bit of an idea of how much time things can take and that the time-lapse is very much my time-lapse videos are 10 to 15 thousand times faster than the actual drawing so it's quite a lot faster in the time-lapse Okay, um, for highlighting on my colored pencil drawings, I like using a jelly roll pen. So I use this pen um, when I want to do the really fine highlights in the eyes. Um, or sometimes there will be some really small white highlights. It can be a number of things and then I will use this right at the end. Once I have finished all my layers of color, only then will I use this as a last option to just bring out a highlight. Uh, another tool I like to use, I like to use a little sharp etching tool like this, so it's got a very sharp point. Um, and it's, it's very good for etching really fine little hairs and things where you actually don't want any color to go into. Um, so because you're indenting the paper with by using this etching tool, the color doesn't go into those tiny little indents. So at the end of the day or when you finish your drawing, you'll see that those little highlights will pop out because no color was able to go in there. So that's really good for tiny little fine white hairs or maybe tiny little highlights as well. Um, another thing I like to use, I like to use a big brush. I always have this handy when I need to wipe off any excess um, pencil shavings or whatever it is on my page to keep it clean. I like to use an electric eraser as well for things like um, fine hairs or for extra little highlights that I need to um, bring out. This is only useful if you haven't got too many layers of color on your page because if you've got too many layers of color there's no way you're going to really bring anything out so just be careful with your layering. And Sharpeners. I like to use my Derwent electric sharpener, so this is really good, especially for the Prismacolor pencils because they tend to break a lot. So this sharpener is pretty good at most of the time not breaking my pencils. And then for my Polychromos pencils, I like using this Prismacolor sharpener um, because it gives the, the pencils a really, really sharp point, a little sharper than the Derwent electric sharpener. And then finally, 
I think it's finally. Um, I have made these from all my pencils. So I have uh, this one which is from my Faber-Castell's Polychromos pencil. So this is just like a little swatch of all the colors. Um, so there's 120 colors here. And then on the top piece, I will put the link as to where I got this chart. It's another artist. She made this chart available and explains to you exactly how she um, put the colors into her own charts. And then, um, yeah, so the top color is the actual color from um, dark to light. And then just at the bottom, you'll have a white underlayer and then you'll put the same color over it from dark to light. So you're getting four different colors out of your one pencil. So that's really handy when you're trying to find true colors out of your reference photos. So I've done that for the Polychromos pencils and I've also done that for the um, Prismacolor pencils. Which took forever. But it's worth it in the end. <laughs> um, I don't really use them much, but um, they do help for finding true colors. A lot of the time, I am not too worried about my colors being exactly the same as the reference. But if I do want them exactly the same, then I'll make sure that I compare some areas. Um, so that is what I'll use there. And then just on a final note, the lights that I use over my work is just a table standing lamp like this. I've got two odd lights like this. That just um, yeah, place them however you want over your work. So this is a very good uh, daylight lamp, so it doesn't um, change the color or anything. So they're really good if you're working at night and you want to work with the right colors. So um, that's quite useful. Oh, and then finally, I like to plan my day and my week in advance. And then I just have a chart like this with the whole week's worth of. Um, scheduling that I want for the entire week and I try and keep up to date with every day as much as I can because if I do not actually have this in front of me where I can see it I do forget things or I take too long on a specific thing and I don't spend enough time on another thing so I kind of need to and I often do fall behind because I I put too much focus on one thing that might not need as much time as another thing so it's good to have that kind of schedule in front of you where you can see and keep yourself on track so that you don't fall behind um, so that is about it I think yes and the camera that I'm using to record all of this right now and to record my work is a Canon 60D um, photo camera so it's not exactly a video camera one day I'll get the chance to upgrade to a video camera which might be a bit easier but um, for the moment this is okay the only downfall is that it only records for 10 minutes at a time so I need to make sure that I keep pressing record and then it only I have the 32 gig SD cards in them so they only take about four videos at a time so that means after 40 minutes I have to take all the videos off and then I have to um, yeah, use another SD card, do the same process again, and then, yeah, and that's just how it keeps going. So, yes, that that is all the supplies that I use for my drawing. I don't think I've really missed anything. No, I haven't. So, I hope that's been useful. Um, if you want to know something specific, like if you want to know how I use a particular tool, maybe with like the etching tool, how I actually use the etching and the effect that it gives in the end, um, in terms of bringing out the highlights, or if you want to know exactly how I blend with my solvent, and if you want to know different methods of blending, um, I'm happy to do a video on that, and whatever, whatever it is that you guys want to know, just let me know and I would happily um, do some videos that focus on them specifically if that's what you guys want. So for now I hope that that was useful to you. So that is this week's Q&A just on the supplies that I use. And I will see you guys tomorrow. So I have a live session on Periscope tomorrow. Check my Facebook if you want to know what time I'll be drawing live and you guys can ask me questions in real time. Um, so that's available tomorrow, blah, 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 tomorrow, so if I don't see you then, then I will see you guys next week. Bye!